Hi guys, I'm the Empire Grappler and welcome to my podcast. Today's guest is a good friend of mine, Cam Sovey, who used to train with us at Leverage Academy and has now moved to Singapore where he's opened up his own school. So he's a, he's a teacher, he's a brown belt, uh, he's also an artist with uh, the gentle art. And so check out his website at gjjsingapore.com. And so, yeah, so this podcast is a bit, bit of a different format. It's what I call a role cast where I get to grapple with my guests. We have a bit of a role and a chat about it and chat about a few other things. So he talks about frames, self-defense, jiu-jitsu, Pedro Sal way of teaching, um, sort of his, his philosophies and where he gets inspiration and also his SYS system, which is sort of an acronym he's come up with. So check out his school if you're ever in Singapore, and I hope you guys enjoy. Us. Hello. Hello, Sava. I am your father. Cam Sobi. Cam Sobi. Cam Sobi. Yeah. Cam Sobi. I don't know what the hell is that, but it's Cam Sobi. Cam Sobi is the person. He's the name. Cameron. Cam, 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 Cam the designer. Okay, Cam, Cam the, the designer. Cam Sobi. Cam Sobi. Make sure you keep. What? Hi, I'm, I'm the Impaired Grappler. No, that's so stupid. Hi. That's not a fucking new thing. Hello, I am Troy McClure. Hi, I'm the Impaired Grappler. Um, yeah. Hi there, I'm the Impaired Grappler. With me today is Cam Sobi from Team Pedro Sawa Gracie Jiu Jitsu Singapore. I hope I got that right, it's a bit of a mouthful. <laughs> but um, yeah, so he's a Pedro Sawa brown belt. That's pretty much enough said in my book, but he's also a, a talented artist and basically, yeah, he basically is trying to live the Bushido lifestyle and he's very, very uh, talented and knowledgeable um, within the martial arts. Um, so basically, he's been running his Singapore Jiu-Jitsu school for how long now? Oh, we've been, we've been open about eight months, so... Yeah, doing really well so far, so everyone's coming along nicely, and uh, yeah, it's, it's a joy to, to, to go in and, and teach and, and train every day, so yeah, just loving life, so. Yeah, I've heard um, great things, of, of a few reviews of, I read one review of someone that visited from the UK, um, yeah, basically, it's high-level high training, self-defense, Team Pedro Sauer, um, it's everything you want from a jiu-jitsu school, and Cam of experience he's teaching firsthand and he's an amazing instructor and teacher and basically um yeah he's he's good for the art and he's going to be well known one day if not already uh, well yeah we'll see but um we'll see how that goes but um but yeah basically yeah our school's just uh very focused on self-defense and uh bringing jujitsu to ordinary people so not uh, not necessarily the sort of athletic pursuit, but um, but we can do that. But um, more bringing it to, to everyday people, so people who who need jujitsu, okay, and who might not have necessarily have access to it in those more competitive type schools. So it's just a sort of a different take on the art. Um, yes, it's very in line with sort of uh, with Professor Sowers and my instructor Phil Grapsis's type of thinking. So um, yeah, so and um, I'm very proud to be a part of that. A bit spreading the art to, to, to everybody. So yeah, for sure. Um, how would you describe the power of jujitsu, especially within the Pedro Sawa school? Um, the, the connection and just through everything you've experienced with pr the professor over the last few years, him coming down and yeah. all that, like. And for just for the everyday person, like it's very hard to conceptualize. Like, how would you? Mm. Like for the everyday person coming in, the power they can get from it, even with just the simple techniques mm. and the levels of that. Yeah, well, one of the things with uh, with jujitsu is it, it really changes the way um, of your thinking. Um, so the the whole uh, the whole sort of mindset and the approach that uh, that that uh, Professor Sauer and his his affiliate schools um, usually take is one where we're always observing 
um, what is happening in, in, in any given situation uh, when we're training um, and then trying to understand um, from any given sort of safe position um, what the other person's opportunities are and how we can use those in a way which, uh, which then benefits us or uh, helps us to improve our position by applying our knowledge of the mechanics, of, the, uh, of leverage, of, of distance management, and, and all, of those, all of those aspects. Um, but basically, the re one of the real great benefits that, um, that, that I found in training with, uh, with Pedro's association is that basically one of the analogies that he uses is that we've got to look at the mat like it's a laboratory and that we're all scientists. Um, all scientists trying to work together to achieve a greater understanding of the mechanics involved of, um, of everything that goes on in this art. So, um, and when you approach it with that, with that mindset, you know, everybody in your, on the mat is not, they're not your enemy. It's not, you don't come to, to, to train to go to war every night. Uh, you come to train to, to help each other improve. So, and, and when you train with that, with that in mind, you can train in a way which is, which is safe, which is, um, which is very beneficial to your learning as well. So, um, yeah, so it's, um, it helps you to be able to, you know, slow things down, not try to, to win, but tr to try and learn. And that, that's the key. And that's, that's one of the, the, the most beautiful things that I've found in training in this association. So, yeah, that's something that I'm trying to, trying to keep going. So, yeah. Yeah, f yeah, for sure. Yeah, that's what I've been trying to do, in, like, with my mm. impaired grappling. Um, yeah, I've been trying to – I found a way to be able to roll while keeping my arms safe and still being able to heal. But um, through Pedro's philosophy – like his laboratory, like share the moves, you know, that like if someone, if we all go up together in the tide, I like when it talks about all, all the ships should go up in the school, not just one, one person become a champion and everyone else just quits and, you know, you have a school of one person. <laughs> um, that will never work. But I, I see the example that he sets and mm. like what I see in our school here at Leverage Academy and also what I've heard from you, your school you've got how many 80 students now signed up yeah. so in in eight months that's um yeah, yeah. Pretty, pretty cool with that. yeah yeah you got, you got like 20 20 lessons you're running a week yeah. are you doing that all personally yeah 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 so yeah it's just me teaching all of those lessons but um but yeah i love i love what i do and um i think as long as you as you care about the the students and their progress um you know, there's no reason why you can't continue to grow at a, at a really, really great rate. Um, and that's, that's one of the things that, um, that uh, one of the lessons that I got from my instructor, Philip Grapsis, and, and from Pedro Sauer as well, is um, he, you know, makes you feel like, you know, he cares about your progress. And, um, and that's something that's really, really important in an instructor that I've found. So, you know, I try to model myself on the, the people that have come before me and, um, and yeah, and basically, you know, all the time, it's like, you know, when I'm training with someone, it's not how do I beat them, but how do I improve? Okay, and how can they improve? And then when we, when we improve together, all right, when they get better, okay, naturally, then you're gonna get better as well. So it's, yeah, it's exactly. worth it, it's... yeah. And that's, that's what this is about, you know, and Sav is, yeah. Sav is really good at, um, with this, you know, and you'll see today when we're, we're looking at the video, that, um, that you know, Sava approaches things in a slightly different way because of his, um, because of the, the the impairments that he has, and um, and it's great. It's great for the art. It's great for training partners as well, as as for him, um, and you know, it helps us to explore things in a in a slightly different way, which we might not ordinarily have done. So, um, you know, if it weren't for you know, him, Sava not being able to use, you know, his right arm to the, to the full effect that he could. So it's, um, so yeah, it's, it's an interesting, it's a really interesting way and it's how we can use each other to improve. It's really cool. So I really like what you're doing. Well, thank you. Thank you. I mean, that, that's what I'm trying to do, like with Instagram, put the clips of my roles and stuff like that. Yeah. And just to show that, and like I even surprised myself when I actually look at the videos that I didn't, 
realize I could move that way. It's like, oh, is that how I'm moving? And now I'm, I can see the videos and actually learn what I'm doing rather than not having an idea, just like going with the flow and feeling my way to position. Mm. But yeah, for me, it's all about just making the person on top, which invariably I'm always on the bottom uh, because of my impairment, but just to make the person on top as uncomfortable as possible, or at least just thinking about something different mm. rather than the, the, the hand that got wrapped around my collar trying to choke me <laughs> or the armbar that they got locked off. I'm trying to distract them. Mm. But, yeah, anyway, it's, um, it's powerful stuff. So um, just press play and we'll, uh, Let's have a look. we'll just have a look see. Yeah, you know what we do? Oh. We start standing, do we? Yeah. Uh, uh, I think we. Yeah. I think we start standing. Here we go. We need a bit of a conversation as we start. Yeah. All right, here we go. Here we go. So Sava tried to wrap my head there. I just yeah, yeah. tried to stay upright there, just to, and I uh, oh, got a little bit of an arm drag and. Uh, Oh, have a look at that sweep. That's beautiful. <sighs> uh, it's just a little uh, sumo guyish type, but uh, I tried to get on top there, but Sava was able to entangle my legs a little bit, so I had to back out and and then start to try and pass. Yeah, it's like, okay. I'll... I'm being taken down. I may as well do something to his legs to stop him from yeah. <laughs> and he does doing a what good he job of that. Now, if you look at Sava's hands positions here, it's, it's interesting. So one, he's trying to block this hand that I'm trying to use to attach to his upper body. And then if you look at his, um, his right arm, his, uh, although he can't grab with it, um, he's, he was using it and you might see it again in a second. Um, he's, he starts to use it to try and keep my head from crossing his center. Um, which is a really good way of trying to prevent a side mount. Yeah, there it is. So it's up there on the other side of my head. So he's basically trying to stop my spine from crossing his spine to end up in the side mount. Um, but I think I, end up, I ended up getting my head north of it. So got a little bit past there. Yeah, where we got, yeah, I trapped the leg in and through to the side mount. Yeah. Yeah, but uh, as you notice, uh, here I was trying to... Uh, <laughs> trying to do a kick off the kick off the bags but um you thought I was we were in the way yeah, but I was trying to use that against you and you thought oh, let's get away, let's get away from the bag so yeah, I thought it was in your way yes yeah, but I was trying to use it as a weapon to <laughs> to knock you out or something you could get away but um yeah I try to use that forearm and that the head control is very important to me like with the, the top of the lever of the spine yeah. like if I can somehow get that head control, mm. I'm in good position. I always try to look for it no matter what mm. position, like like here. Yeah, and if you have a look there, I was able to attach to Sava's uh, shoulder there, which allowed me to complete the pass. Um, so, yeah, I was able to ne to negotiate past Sava's his left arm um, to attach to his head so that I couldn't... Basically, if Sava could uh, recorrect his spine in line with my spine, he would be able to recover his legs more effectively, but I was just able to, to get past. Yeah, that's easier said than done. <laughs> yeah, it, it can be tricky. And uh, now Sava's got my arm caught a little bit. Um, yeah, my favorite, my favorite move, yeah. <laughs> defense. In the Basically here, if you notice, I'm just starting to walk my hip up a little bit with the, it's really important that when you try to walk your hips up that you do keep something on the other side of his head there. So I've got my uh, right arm there on the side of his head, which is allowing me to sort of um, get a little bit of movement out of Sava's frame, the, the elbow frame that he initially had on my hip. And um, I think, yeah, so just there. So it basically just stops his head from moving away to re-correct his elbow position. Um, yeah, so now what have we got? I'm using the hand there to block the hip. Try for an inverted triangle, no arm. Yeah. Just trying to, trying to annoy you, trying to do something. <laughs> yeah. And then I try to go for a sweep and you reverse. Yeah, I was able you, to you catch felt, his arm. You felt that coming. And that's really, a, it's a, this is a good little tip I got from Pedro here. Always having the toes on the mat. Mm. So when I was able to scoop that arm, because then you can really use that knee as a bit of a tool to, yeah. to get a the pry bar. Yeah. 
And uh, now I've stepped over the head. Now um, I wasn't able to catch the arm, but I was able to catch the head now. Yeah, I'm in hell right now. Yeah. Ordinarily there, I would um, use the, I would drag the head away to isolate the arm a little bit. Um, but um, I just wanted to, to, to see what, what else we could do from the other side. Because, um, yeah, try, try and, trying to protect my arm. It's always good keeping it playful, rolling with um, people you trust and just tapping early. It's just good to, to have that level of um, trust in your partners. But as Pedro always says, you've got to protect your own joints. You're the person in charge of protecting mm -hmm. your joints. But never leave it to your partner. After a while, if he gets you in the position, tap and then, then get him to put you back in that position and then go again, see if you can defend. That way he's got the tap already. He has no ego involved. He'll help you. But that's what I love about what Pedro does. And, mm. and you see it. Yeah, try to go for an impaired sweep there. But Yeah, you went for it. Yeah, you had like a little omoplata type position, uh, which was good. Yeah, it's beautiful. Yeah, that, yeah that, that's something I want to work on to, to get good. This is, this is great, this little thing here. This, um, this, I remember this was causing a little bit of a problem there. I switched through and Saba was able, I brought my arm back too far there and uh, Saba was able to catch, catch my arm with his, uh, his arm on that side. And uh, he's got my head a little bit here, but um, yeah, it's, it's, I guess it's a little more annoying than anything. But um, the, 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 that little control on, his, uh, on, my, on my arm there, that was really good. And... Um, yeah, I just saw it, made it up on the spot. Didn't know what I was doing, but I, I figured I'll, I wonder if I could trap this. And yeah, and then I was able. I started slipping it out, and he let it go. So, um, but um, yeah, no, that was that was cool. It was a little nice little thing idea to play with there. And now, uh, yeah, it's a bit hard holding onto those uh, figure four or Camaro Americana <laughs> locks with one hand, but <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and uh, it's understandable too. And uh, there I was just, um, I was going for the, uh, the neon, a little bit of a neon belly. It, basically the idea behind that one, um, and I was able to get the, the arm there. The idea behind that one is you can use that, uh, that little sort of half neon belly position to turn the opponent's body the other way, and then you can start to isolate and, um, their, their arm on the side that, that you were on. So, because basically as you turn their body, their arm comes up. So. And then I was able to, to get the, the arm lock there by, uh, by baiting and trying to grab the, his legs. Now, where are we? We're in the mountain now. Uh-oh, collar choke. What a, where are we? Here we are. Yeah, my favourite defensive position. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. Yeah, I like how um, you were rolling, like... You, you were getting stuff, but you were just letting them go and just flowing, going to the next point, the next position. Just, it was a very enjoyable role in the end, just a nice flow, playful role. I was still trying to do stuff, but you were defending, obviously. You were attacking. Yeah, yeah, just, it's always good to keep it playful. You have a lot more fun that way. And, um, and um, it's always good because it starts to, to open up your, your, the opportunities that you have um, in, in other places rather than sort of fixating on one on one particular submission or one particular you know thought in your mind so just letting it go or sort of observing what else is going on when you're potentially catching the submission is, is a really good little tool for you to train as well so you don't have to always you know get the get the uh, the opponent to say uncle or to tap it's um it's a good way of training for yourself and and for your partner too so your partner gets to practice starting to try and escape a little bit, um, which, which is great, you know? So, and, and in order to practice being able to escape and to practice different sort of moves there, you have to have trust in your partners that they're not going to, they're not going to hurt you, you know? And it, it, goes, it goes both ways. Sometimes, you know, it's, it's a, like a little respecting. So I was trying to get past the, the legs there. Yeah, trying to play dirty feet here. Yeah, trying, um, trying to just see if I can try to walk through it somehow. Yeah, there we go. And uh, he, get, he gets um, passed. It's a very, very nice, nice roll, this one. Nice uh, little playful when I start. And I ended up coming up to the knees. That was nice. That was beautiful. Nice other. Yeah, tr just I like to hitch a ride, like yeah. Pedro says, just let you do the work. Yeah. It's a nice little, this is a nice roll. 
So what's going on here? So there's a guard again trying to pass. I'm trying to like break you down, hold you down, get the legs up for triangles or other other attacks. I just want to trap your head. And you and see, um, yeah, that's nice. And then there, just trying to clear his knee. So often when I'm trying to clear that knee, I'll drop that that hip down to the mat to mm -hmm. to make the knee heavy, so then I can step over it. And I was able to clear there. And now this is this like little situation here. If you can use that knee, sometimes you can turn the opponent's body mm -hmm. to help get underneath the arm on this side. Or I think I just did a little switch there. So this is a little position sometimes I use to mount or to, to get a reaction from the opponent. So you use that to get under the arm there, to get the underhook? Yeah, so this one was a little set up into a, like a, a north-south type choke. So it's, um, yeah, it's like a little uh, a switch. And depending on how the opponent reacts, you can catch the head sometimes and um, in a nice, uh, a nice, it sinks nicely into the north-south choke. Um, so yeah, it's a little thing we can play with a little. And now I'm just trying to wrap you up, trying to hold, stop you from passing, but you're doing a fairly good, heavy job. I definitely felt lots more pressure this time around than last time we rolled, <laughs> uh, especially like when we we're chest to chest. It felt like a Mack truck was on, my, on me. Even when I had, even when I turned to have space to breathe at the back of my lungs, space yeah. on my back i i was like what the hell <laughs> so much pressure from from cams it was awesome it was... and Sava's doing doing well defending here he's got um that he's almost slipped his head out there which is which is good i'm starting to climb his elbow up a little bit though so it's um there we go, he slipped it free. And then yeah, I tried to use that arm on my head to defend against a head arm triangle just mm. to keep that space as a frame. Um, it doesn't always work, but mm. depends on the position. It, it, it can usually get a reaction. Mm. And you'll see there, like, see the, the toes that are on the mat? It's helping me to keep that arm elevated in that position. Okay. So, yeah, and I was able to step mm. over for a potential arm lock there. So the here we are. And sitting back and... Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I couldn't get my defences up for that one. But um yeah, obviously you just let it go. But yeah, it's 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 good to roll with people that can just <laughs> just tap your left, right and centre. <laughs> Way better than you, it's always fun. No, no, no. It's um it's it's yeah, it's uh it's just great to, to train with Sava again because um it's um it's great to train all positions as well. Um so that's one of the things that um, that you sh that that I believe is really important when you train is that no matter like you know what level you are um, that you should always train on the bottom you should always train in bad positions you could should always train in almost like you know near submission positions um, so that you can continue to think about those positions and increase your understanding not only from the bottom but also from the top and um, I'll see his sub yeah, pass trying to maintain the top and sweep. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, if you notice, most of this role is like 95% cam on top, um, even when he asked me to go on top, <laughs> just, just to feel what I'm like. It's like, floop, straight away. No, he's doing well. I'm just, um, just, just testing different things that he's mm. doing. And um, he's, he, he caught me like in a couple of like uh, little situations, as you saw earlier, where um, he was able to, to trap my arm and make it a bit uh, and make it uh, tricky. So it's really it's really good because he it's it's a different experience rolling with someone who who has to come up with different different solutions to problems because of um because of different things and you'll see yeah he, he Sava's usually very very good at um his head control is usually like uh, one of the best things that that he does and it's really good and I've picked up a, quite a few things training with him in the, the way that he sort of controls the head and looks to, to control the head. And that's, and that's one of the great things. So when you, when you train and you train um, in a way where, you know, you don't mind getting like swept or, or tapped or caught in bad positions, um, that, you know, the, you, can, you can really learn a lot from your partners in, in what they do because quite often they have a different perspective to you. Um, you know, and they've, they've trained different, different areas. So it's, it's great. 
that's that's where I really really love the that that sort of scientist uh, oh. using that mat as a laboratory sort of metaphor that that the professor uses. So. Yeah, well, like the professor's the best example of that. Like because of his his own injuries, his jujitsu has evolved to a very very strong, powerful point, and it's it's just very basic, simple stuff. You see him. A nice, nice pass of my legs, obviously, <laughs> as usual there. But yeah, like just that that inspiration from Professor. Yeah, you see, I'm trying to stop you. I'm trying to frame on my head there to try to stop you closing that gap to be able to mm. do a head arm, and also to sort of use that to hit your, hit your right on you as you're pushing me away. Yeah. But um. Mm. Yeah. No, that's cool. He's using like a little bit of a. A frame with his forearm there, which was really cool. He uses his, uh, his sort of the, the bottom of his palm heel on his head mm. and um, uses the bone to sort of keep me, keep me a little bit closer to his hips, which is cool. And then there, I've got the little, able to switch through again. And uh, you, you do really well at, coll at collecting those arms that are framing up. Yeah, um, oh, it's one of those things that you, we all almost got rolled there. Like you had that arm, see, I got that sort of relaxed yeah. there, and then. Oh, and I think I think this is where I was like, hold on a sec, that felt way too easy. <laughs> we had a little discussion. I'm like, did you help me with this? You're like, oh, kind of. <laughs> so I was like, okay, okay. Yeah, I was just uh, oh, wanted to feel some more of Saba's attacks because he's been doing. Um, he does things a little bit differently. And then here I try to sweep him over and then he resists and I was able to switch through and, and take the back a little bit there. That was, that was sweet, I like that. Yeah, that's another, it's one of those things that's, um, that, uh, it's one of the, the little P Professor Sauer specials there that um, I picked up from, from some of his instruction. I was going and then I, yeah. Yeah, with the arm bar again. Now here you'll see, I'm trying to monitor that, that arm that Sava's gonna use to try and attach to my head. And then I tried to do that little, the little, um, to stop his head from um, crossing my center there too. But. Um, yeah, you're doing well. You're just all over me, all <laughs> over my back. <laughs> And let, let's see if I can, I'm defending my bad arm here, but you let it go. Nice, gentle roll. Get to yeah. see my guard work now, let's see. Yeah, but your guard to, passing's really well. Really yeah, good. I'm trying to I'm trying to keep your, your legs out from inside my hips. It's, um, and um, it's one of those things that's, um, that can be a bit tricky. Um, because once those, those feet, if he can use those feet inside me, um, then... Uh, and here I'm trying my, my one arm defense on my head that we are discussing before. Yeah, so it was just to keep me safe for at least a few seconds to get out. Hmm. Yeah, that was really good. He used these, uh, the little elbow, uh, sorry, the, the forearm frame which was good and it gave him enough space. And then when I let up a little bit, he was able to recover his arms. So. Now you're doing the Pedro mount. I'm trying to keep your arms out. Oh, and he got game. out. And so Saba did really well there. He forced me to bail on the, uh, on the mount because I lost, he got, he started to get his leg inside. So, you know, that's one of the things that uh, I ended up getting his arms. Oh, warning bells are ringing here. That's why I'm <laughs> desperately trying to get my legs into the game to protect my arm yeah. or something, or or even that, try to get the, the 
inverted triangle on the arm then. I'm try I'm hoping to get my leg over for yeah, a sweep yeah. here. I saw yeah, it. This is what I was yeah, I was yeah. trying to do my sweep but that was beautiful. I saw that sweep you did. Mm. I saw that on one of the other videos that you did. That was a beautiful. That's that's probably what the only reason it didn't work. <laughs> uh, that's my problem rolling. Like I rolled with <laughs> rolled with Andy yesterday, and he's like, "Oh, I saw you do that yesterday. That's why I defended." It's like, oh. <laughs> but but that, that's a good thing. Like the more the better I get at something, the better people defend, and the better we all learn. Yeah, that's that's one of the things. You know, the um, yeah, I saw Sava do that sweep on. Um, I think it was when you were in uh, Newcastle oh, on that video. Yeah, thing. that was that was a beautiful little sweep there, and um, and yeah, I was I was lucky to recognise it there, but um, yeah, and that's a little switch position that I do sometimes. To like I'm trying, I'm trying to think what can I do to sort of control his hips because he's on top of my hips. Is this like mm. I want to sort of try to get you off? And that was throw that, you somehow, but there was no that feed into the north south choke again. First play. Okay, we're back after a battery failure. <laughs> yeah. So what are we doing? Now? So now you got me in the north south. You trying to isolate that arm. I've yeah. got my my impaired defence. What I, my wife calls the Barnabas defence. Yeah, it's a it's a nifty little defence that Sava does where he uh, he hooks his he hooks his leg. So you saw just then I, I bailed because I was. I've tried to get it out before, and then uh, so I ended up just trying to go for the back instead and attack the neck. So. And that's that's the end of that the roll pretty much. Um, Look at that, Slava's ripped. Look at him. He's shot. <laughs> yeah, it's just hundred style. Yeah, that's just um, all, all the sweating. We haven't been acclimatized. We haven't acclimatized <laughs> to the uh, haven't acclimatized to the hot weather we're getting in Melbourne yet. But um, yeah, that was. Yeah. Yeah, well, that was an enjoyable role. That was beautiful. That was a very, it was a very enjoyable role. Um, and yeah, there was a, a couple of things there that I'm gonna try and uh, play play with with Sava um, to try and sort of adopt a couple of little possible strategies that he was doing there, which is which is really cool. So yeah, really good. Yeah, well, uh, I would hopefully yeah pick your brain, and I want to try and come up with my own my own impaired system, like. Yeah. And the aim is to try not to be in every position to be mm. safe from strikes. Yeah. So even if I'm underneath, I'm trying to think, can I get struck here? And a lot of times I can, so I've got to in, improve on that. But mm. it's a long, a long, slow journey and um, that's it. So tell me about your system that you've developed. Just one final question. The like with regards to the Pedro Sawa and like how you how you learn your your mm. way and like how you've incorporated that into the into the Pedro Sawa association with what you're doing um, with the, the combatives and the Pedro Sawa curriculum as well as mm. as well as just your way of learning the way you systemize your jiu-jitsu yeah. yeah so uh well basically it's it's nothing that's that's entirely new about it um it's just through through the through the years of um of training under under different instruct or well, different people and under phil and and pedro and and um experiencing some of some of the other people in pedro's association as well as outside the association um and and some of the literature as well. So some of Kano's writings, some of some of the other the other judo or jujitsu masters' writings, um, is it basically the the idea that that I try to look at is I try to think about and this is something that 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 the the Gracie jujitsu um, exponents uh, talk about a, a lot as well is. Um, trying to be safe, trying to always survive, to think of that I need to make sure that I'm not dying first. Okay, so I need to make sure that I, yeah, exactly, <laughs> that I'm not getting hit, that I'm not getting submitted, that I'm not, um, that I'm not a, you know, about to lose. Well, that's why most people come to jiu-jitsu, to learn to fight and not get beat up and exactly. hurt. Exactly, so, and that's, then that's it. So then when I try to apply that same mindset is, okay, so how does it work? So how do we be efficient? How do we stay safe? And then once we understand how to make a position safe so that we're not immediately dying, we're not immediately getting submitted, 
past, whatever, then we have to look at not what we can do from there, not what I want to do to my opponent, but what are the possible responses of my opponent from that position. And if I understand all the little possibilities, the little doors, okay, then I can booby trap each one of those doors and use it in a way which is able to result in me improving my position or submitting. So basically the idea is the first thing I look to do, so it's a, it's a little three-step sort of um, little acronym that, again, it's not, entirely, it's not entirely new. It's just something that I've used to sort of help sort of progress my own learning is that first thing I look to do is make the position safe. And then I look to yield to any of my opponent's responses, yield to and utilize any of my opponent's responses from that sort of safe position. That's a yield to win. Yeah, yield to win. So I use, then I look to use any of my opponent's responses. So if I have to understand what they are, and then once they happen, then I use them in a way which allows me to improve my position. And then the S, so S-Y-S, the S is to secure the, the next position or the submission. Okay, so it's S-Y-S. I just, I just sort of made that little acronym as a way to sort of make it easier to explain to my students in a way that's going to make it uh, simplified and, and sort of so that they understand that this is, this is what we're doing. We're not trying to beat people. We're trying to stay safe, understand um, what our opponent can do from that position, and then be able to utilize those responses through our understandings of body mechanics, leverage, distance management, all of those, all of those things that we learn in jiu-jitsu. So. I like it, the sis-jitsu. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, just the, the SYS, the, the system. But it's, again, it's nothing, in, it's nothing really new. It's just, um, just my little way of explaining what, um, of what all of these other great jiu-jitsu practitioners um, have, have, have taught. And, um, and it's just the way that I just used to sort of describe to in any situation, all right, this is the sort of like the little three-step sort of method that you're wanting to, to use to help you improve your jiu-jitsu and, to, and to, to help you do it efficiently. Um, so basically the idea is if my opponent is bigger, stronger, heavier, faster, uglier, all of those bad things, if I assume that they're, all of those, 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 those properties, then I have to assume that I can't enforce my will on him. Okay, I can't say, I'm going to make this happen. Right, because then they're probably going to have something to say about that. So they usually, yeah. Yeah, exactly. So I just look to try and stay safe, make the position safe, and then if I can understand what they're going to try to do to me, we can use that against them. So that's the basic the principles of um, of Jew uh, of the the Jew in Jiu Jitsu, the the soft or the the gentle. And um, again, nothing new. It's just um, yeah, it's just uh, it's just my way of just sort of just putting it down just to sort of help teach students. So Yeah, put in your own words so you can learn and then you yeah. can teach others the same way. Yeah. Okay, so th that's pretty much it for this interview or video. Um, where can people find you? What, what um, do you want to, do you want to promote anything at the moment? Like the, your, your business and well, yeah, if you're, if you're interested in learning Gracie Jiu-Jitsu, um, pop by uh, our, our school, Gracie Jiu-Jitsu Singapore, Team Pedro Sauer in, uh, in Singapore. If you're, if you're in the area, if you're passing through, you're more than welcome to come down and, 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 and enjoy, the, enjoy some training. Um, if you're living in Singapore, come down and, and, and see. Um, but yeah, basically, yeah, you can, you can check out our website at um, gjjsingapore.com. Uh, and um, yeah. And uh, and check it out. And there's a, there's some there's some resources on there too that you might want to check out. If like there's a little article on on that little SYS um, uh, system that that I put up. But yeah, again, like all, all I'm about is just sharing sharing jujitsu and um, and doing it every day. And uh, and uh, yeah, just just loving training. So and uh, Sav is doing an excellent job here with the the impaired grappler. Um, yeah, he has. Oh, just just doing what I can. He's doing great, and and it's one of those things. It's um, it's just it, it enlightens us all to like different ways of doing things when people um, you know, have, you know, limitations, and um, and and it's fantastic for the art. So yeah, I really really love what you're doing, brother. So. Thank, thanks, man. Uh, very powerful stuff. Um, 
thanks for the interview, brother. Thanks, brother. And we'll, we'll be on the mat again before you leave. Yeah. Um, so we're filming this the 1st of January, day after yeah, the Ronda Rousey new, fight. New but yeah. so happy New Year's, happy everyone. New Year, everyone. <laughs> and uh, we hope for your 2017 to be a good one. Thanks, guys. Thanks. Peace. Cheers. Is this thing on? <laughs> that was pretty fun. All right, I hope you guys enjoyed that interview I did with Cam and that roll cast. If you enjoyed that format, let me know in the comments below. Um, if you're listening to the audio, be sure to check out the YouTube video as well. Um, be sure to check out the links below to Cam's website and also to the link to that article and links to my website and all my social media. So like, subscribe and share. And thanks for watching, listening. We'll see you next time. Oops.